I think for me, like if I were to define what confidence is, I think it's nothing other than like treating yourself and looking at yourself like your best friend. Because sometimes you don't like your best friend, but you'll always love your best friend. You'll always go to bat for her. Serena Kerrigan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, Serena Kerrigan, aka Queen of Confidence. I would like do my best attempt at giving a rundown of who you are and what you do, but I feel like I really want to let you do that. So when you're at a party, people ask you what you do. How do you intro yourself? I say I'm an icon. Um, <laughs> I love I, it. Really, I actually don't say I'm the Queen of Confidence. I leave that for my Instagram bio. I okay. usually say I'm an entrepreneur, a creator. Um, I'm writing screenplay, so I'm writing, I'm a writer, director. And yeah, I, I I really my aim is to make women feel empowered. And so I do that through storytelling. So give us some of the details. You have you created a show, now you have another show, you created a card game, like explain some of the how you got here and what you do now. So I um, went, I grew up in New York City, went to Duke University. I graduated with like seven people in my major for visual media studies and thinking like all my friends were doctors, lawyers and, you know, tech, finance. But I, my parents are in the industry and in, in, in television and, and film. And I always knew that that's what I wanted to do. I started making films when I was 15 and I was like, I'm the next Sophia Coppola. And oh, wow. I am. Um, I'm going to be. So I... Went to Over Friday 29, a women's media company. I worked there for three and a half years as a video producer. I touched every single vertical. This was like pre-TikTok. This was like, you either were a YouTuber, or you could work at these like huge, like amazing media companies that were like on the app, right? Like BuzzFeed, Vox, um, Bustle, or Viary. And it was just like a really great, cool place to be at the time in like the 2016s. And then, so I worked there until 2020 and I quit my job around February. And obviously lockdown happened a couple of weeks later. And I quit my job because I really like I felt very sad of the fact that like I was building this brand to empower women and it was going to be monetizable through content and also through products. And I really just had a vision for myself. And then when lockdown happened, it was kind of like, OK, like this is like your time to really create and produce. And so I was sitting in my apartment and I decided to go live every day. And then that shifted into a live show where I would go live on Instagram and I would date men on Instagram live in front of a live audience. And every week it would build and build. And, you know, I just was at a play yesterday and a woman came up to me and was like, I watched you through the pandemic. I think it just provided this like entertainment and community that people were so badly needing through and during that time. And that's really yeah. when things started to take off. And then from that dating show, I spit it into a card game. And now I have four of them. Let's fucking date. Let's fucking fuck, let's fucking play, and let's fucking go. And these games are specifically created to boost communication, to break ice, and to get people to feel more intimate with one another. And I think that, like, my whole brand is really predicated on that. It's, like, not just confidence, not just dating, but really, like, communication. How do we talk to ourselves in a nicer? How do we communicate what we want to ourselves and to the world? Because once you start communicating, whether it's your dreams or what you want in a relationship – or asking for more money, like that's how you get to where you want to go. So that's really like what I think, like I would, I, I love my Instagram bio because I created it in seven, 2017 and yeah, I'm the queen of confidence and I saved a seat for you at my throne, which is like so iconic. I could never, I will literally never delete it. I'll be like literally 80 and that will still be my Instagram bio. If Instagram is like this. However, like I think that if you were to pinpoint something I'm an expert in, it's like I'm a storyteller and I know how to communicate. And that's really like how I try to help my audience in any kind of facet of what they want in their life. I love it. So that was a really to... like, no, that was my elevator pitch, elevator pitch of who I am. That was a great elevator pitch. And that's exactly what we wanted because if for some reason people are not familiar with the iconic you, we want them to know why they should be. What led you to creating this kind of like alter ego online? Like, have you always been this hyper confident person? Because from what I've read, from what I see on your page, like this was kind of an attempt to cover up maybe some of your insecurities that you have. Definitely. I think, you know, we, I, I just, I, I was 18. I went to Duke and everyone was beautiful and thin and brilliant. And I think that I felt very insecure. I felt like, like my whole like that my happiness was really and my self-worth was always predicated on like if a guy was interested in me. And I just felt so like 
out of control when I walked onto that campus. I didn't feel in control of like my happiness, who I was, my sense of self. And so I decided to create this persona because it was like a clean slate, like a new experience, a new chapter where I created this persona called Serena fucking Kerrigan, who was to me the emblem of confidence. Like she projected that. And I constantly would like go to her and act like her. And eventually like really what's really interesting is like I did was able to monetize and create a whole business out of it. Um, but I think that for me, like the true confidence was like letting that persona almost go. And and you can even yeah. see like the content from like even like maybe two years ago to now, like it's very different. Like I look at my old content and it's like hyper SFK, like slap you in the seats of confidence, tough love, like so sexually like liberated. And I'm still that person. But I think the way that I communicated is a little like it's just less. It's just like, I feel like I don't need to put on a persona to be my confident self. However, it really helps me. And I would advise women to do that because I think that if you set this goal for yourself, like I want to be like this, I want to possess these qualities that this persona person, whatever has, then that's your way of just tapping into it all the time. And then eventually you're, you're able to let go of the persona and, and just be you. Yeah. You kind of started manifesting before it was a big thing. I mean, that's oh, essentially I, what I it is, that, right? I, I literally, I've, I've written, I've said in a bio, like I invented manifestation before like Pinterest did. <laughs> it's like really accurate though. I, I also am wondering if you've gotten some pushback. I mean, I'm sure, have you gotten the, oh, you're so egotistical? Like what, how would you like, why would you say these things about yourself? People don't really say that. And how do you deal with that? I think it's less that I think it's more that people think people like to the way that I get pushback is when people try to police my confidence. They go, well, if she was really confident, then she wouldn't. Oh, yeah. Her. She wouldn't have why she wouldn't like be with her boyfriend. Like there's all these th constant like whatever I do, they want to be like, but she's not really she. Why is she the queen of confidence? They love to do that. Like literally Google and me. It, and, like it will like. And I think it's interesting. I think the reason they're doing that is because they're not confident. So they so badly want to like just just kind of poke and see that my confidence is fake so that way they feel good about themselves and I think for me like if I were to define what confidence is I think it's nothing other than like treating yourself and looking at yourself like your best friend because sometimes you don't like your best friend but you'll always love your best friend you'll always go to bat for her like if a guy goes yeah. to her you're gonna be like fuck that guy you're not gonna be like yeah you're like the problem's you you know what I mean like yeah. I think like that's really how I see confidence. And so I think like if you want to get Botox or if you want to uh, have a boyfriend, like I don't think that that makes you any less confident in who you are. You know what I mean? And I think that women are like held to a standard where like you either are too fat or you're too skinny or you're like you look like you're 50, but then you have too much filler. It's just like you can <laughs> never win as a woman ever. And so my thing is like, what would you tell your best friend to do? And like, would you support her? Like my best friend was like, I really want to get Botox. I'd be like, go for it. Like do whatever makes you feel happy in yourself. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm always like. How are we talking to ourselves in the way that we would treat our best friend? I love that. Is it sad for you that so many, if not probably all of these comments come from other women? <laughs> no, because I think that our society is completely like fucked and it's the patriarchy and like women are just like, it, it comes from a place of pain. Like it really, yeah. like it really does. Like when you go online, like I, like every time I post now on TikTok, I find that the internet is like very, um, it's like volatile in a way that I didn't experience. Like a couple of years ago, I think it's gotten more and more volatile. And like, hundred percent, posting a mean comment gets you likes, and like, there's just no, like, there's no um, acknowledgement that the, there's a person behind and that there's that person like when, when people comment like I've literally been like hi and they're like oh my god I didn't think you'd see this I'm like you're literally commenting on my video so how, <laughs> how? so I think it's yeah. like I have a lot of empathy because I think social media has been so amazing for me in building my business but I, I think it's my Roman empire how I think it's just like destroyed so many things and and is so we're just not meant to have so much information like human beings were not designed to know what every other person in the world was eating, doing, fucking, sleeping, working at. Like, they just were not supposed to know. And so this, like, influx of information makes us feel so much more insecure. Like, every single person I've ever talked to that's a woman is literally like, I don't feel like I'm far enough in my career or far enough in my life or far enough in my love life. They all feel like they're not enough of doing enough, whatever. It's because you're looking outward. And it's so hard not to do that when you're just, like, constantly, like, absorbing, constant consuming information. 
And so interesting that we're talking about this because my boyfriend has noticed that like every time I scroll, no matter if I'm so happy and having the best day, like if I go on and I start looking, I immediately my my energy shifts. And it's yeah. like for no reason. It's not even like I'm like, oh, I wish I was here or there. It's just so easy to just like weirdly start feeling like you're it's just it's a bad energy. Yeah. So like morning, we actually practice of like not looking at our phone until like we woke up, had our morning coffee. We like talked about gratitude. It's so like whatever. But like it's no. a little it's like it, it, it honestly like it changed already has changed my day. Like I really yeah. already like went in with like a different energy. And so yeah. it's like, how can we, I like shifted Instagram over to another page. Like I'm really trying to find ways to like not get sucked in because it's not normal. It's just not fucking normal to be constantly consuming other people's lives, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think so, we all know that it's bad for us, but it's so hard. Like not going on a, my phone, the dopamine. first thing in the morning is so hard. The dopamine hit. It's, it's completely, yeah. it's like literally like hitting your vape or your jewel or like whatever. Yeah. Like it's literally that it's like, you have to break the cycle. You have to actively do things to stop it. But for me, I realized I was like, there's a reason why it's called out of sight, out of mind. Like you like are not meant to, like, of course, like I'm not at Paris Fashion Week. That was a decision that I made because like I want to focus on writing and things that are going to really elevate my career. And like, this is just like not my like niche, right? You know, yeah. I love fashion, Paris, everything about it. Like I made that decision. I'm happy with that decision. Like, and then it's like, I see all the content and I'm like, uh, like I would love yeah. from now right now. I would love to be from row at Prada or like whatever that's in Milan, but you got it. But I think it's like, how can we actually limit that information to feel better about ourselves? You know what I mean? And so I, I think that I think about that constantly. It's if you really do have to limit the information that you're receiving. I think that's wonderful advice. Do you have a best piece of advice that you've ever gotten throughout your life thus far that has stuck with you? My parents were like, so uh, they were so fucking serious about one thing um, other than me being perfect because I'm an only child. But just that, was, just that, I can't even die. OK, the pressure is crazy. <laughs> is do what you love. Like they were so like sad on that for me because my mom was a doctor in Argentina, completed six years of medical school because that's like oh it's different there. After she finished her residency, she was like, fuck it. She moves to the United States goes to NYU film school and is now head of development at MTV. Like she had a crazy career in television. My dad was like going to go to the Marines. Oh, well. And then like became a filmmaker. So like they both like really like they, they did the path that their parents wanted them to. And then they realized that they, and they went towards the path that they love. And they always said to me, like, you have to do what you love. And you spend the majority of your life working. And if you're happy with what you do, the money will come. Like once you're in your, out in your, it's like truly doing what you're supposed to do that's when like the success occurs because you're but also fuck the money I mean obviously not like obviously we all need to live and but it's time like I think that people think that success is like money and stuff but I think that real success is like how are you spending your time and that's why I go back to the social media I'm like oh my god how many hours of my life have I consumed watching other people's content instead of living my life mm -hmm. then it's time will never get back so that's always how I'm like trying to shift and realize I'm like time, time, time is the currency. And then everything, if you are spending your time being happy, then everything else falls into place. Yeah, I love that. Have there been different projects you've worked on and different things as you've been building this career toward what you love? Have there been things that you've realized, wait, I don't love that. And you've had to kind of like reevaluate and shift. Oh, my God. I mean, I think like I am not a TikToker. Like I really like I have. A, I'm a with really you on that. Right. Like I have a considerable following on there. And like I have friends that literally like they wake up, they knock out like six beautiful, amazing videos a day. And like they oh understand it. It comes easy to them, whatever. Like I am a storyteller, but I am a different kind of storyteller. Like I like more long form. I'm writing a screenplay right now. Like so I was trying to constantly fit into this mold. Like I have to be a TikToker. Like I have to do like all the yeah. money's there. Blah, blah, blah. And I was not happy. I was not fulfilled. And I was spending time on something that like just ultimately like wasn't pushing me towards my purpose. And I think the same thing is with like the fashion week stuff. It's like, I really like, I love clothes. Like I love getting invited to things. I love art, but I felt like, you know, I wrote a whole newsletter about how I felt like I was going to these things and it didn't feel like I was going for the right reason. I didn't feel good. Like I felt like it was a popularity contest. I didn't, I never felt happy. Like I, and I'm spending so much money and 
it wasn't furthering my career. Like none of my followers really care. Like they don't, it's like, it, it just became the reason I was attending fashion week and doing all this stuff wasn't for like the right reason. It wasn't helping my career and it wasn't even to celebrate the art. It was like this weird popular kind of, so I just decided to bow out. And I think with TikTok, it's like, I actually TikTok now, like I post, it's funny, like I, I stress free and like I do post a lot just to continue and to like be silly, but I wake up and I work on my screenplay every morning. And like, that's the shift, right? Like that yeah. is the, the like, re- like something that's really guided me is feeling like what feels good and, and, yeah. and go through that. Like it, it gives me, like, when I pull up my phone, I take out, like, nothing comes out. Like I'm not like, it doesn't just happen for other people. It does, but other people can't produce the level of content that I produce and they can't write the screenplays yeah. that I'm writing. So it's like, that's okay. I think it's like realizing your skill and what feels good and not trying to force something that doesn't. Like that doesn't exist. Like I, you know, I just think yeah. don't force it. I love that because I do feel like there's so much pressure, especially as social media evolves, to just do everything. Like it doesn't matter if you don't like reels, you have to make reels. It doesn't matter if you like you have to adapt to social media like versus the other way around. And I love that. I think a lot of creators are just being like, we're not going to play that game anymore. Like we're going to do what we enjoy doing. And just because you tell us that something's going to monetize better than other things, like doesn't mean we're going to change like our art and what we create. It's hard because it's like on one hand, I'm like, I'm so for that. But on the other hand, I'm like, well, now and I talked about this with like, you know, a good friend of mine. He was the music supervisor for a huge movie that just came out. And he was just like and he does music. He's he's behind the scenes. He's just like, it's incredible. Like I have to post now. Like, everyone has to post. Like yeah. no matter what you do in the creative industry, like you will get hi- likely to get more hired if you're showing what you're doing. And, yeah. and, and so it's like, I agree with you, but on one hand, it's like, well, I still need to be my build. And also like when I'm ready to make this movie, are people going to give me more of a chance if I have X amount of followers? It's, it's so true. fucked up. It I'm is like, a necessary evil. It's like finding a balance of being there and also staying true to yourself, which I feel is so hard. So, <laughs> it's so hard. And so I think it's really about like. I, it's just kind of timing. It's just like, I give myself, like, I just make one thing. I I try to like post one thing a day and not even overthink it. And like, on, like, I really like focus on the things that take a lot. Like, it's so interesting. Like even writing this screenplay, it's like, it's not instant gratification. Like there's no like length, there's no comments. There's no like share, like there's no virality. It's a long game. Yeah. I write a page and I'm just like, okay. So like, you know, like it's no, literally. So it's like, but weirdly, I'm so when I when I crack something, I like it just there's nothing. There's no better feeling. So yeah. I'm just trying to like push through and like really do the work because I think like the instant gratification thing to me, like sometimes it can just feel so empty. And I, I think yeah. a lot about like the legacy I want to leave. And I'm like, there are a million videos that I've made that like I don't even know how to find them anymore. Like I literally don't know how to like I forgot how I captioned them. I have, like I don't know where they are. And I feel like when you make a film, like that's real legacy. Like that's it'll yeah. it'll live somewhere, and like it'll have like us. Uh, it just has more legs. Like I don't I don't know how to describe it. I'm not saying that there's incredible incredible work, and and it's so amazing. Like the democracy of the internet, and how like anyone could be a creator, anyone could be a filmmaker. Like that's amazing. Yeah. Like when I started making movies, I had to like lug the craziest, most expensive equipment. It was so fucking heavy. Like I don't even I can't even believe I would do that. But like so it was you know who could afford it. Like, it was just like a pain in the ass. Now you can feel yeah. anything. And I think that that's so beautiful. But I really think about like the mark I want to leave on this world. And it's just, it's bigger than that. If you are listening to this podcast, you are probably a fan of inspirational quotes. And if that's the case, then you should check out my book. I feel that it's a cute little retro book with each chapter being a different emotion and then quotes that can help you with that emotion. So if you're looking to support me or the show, if you need a cute little gift for a friend or just something to flip through when you're feeling down one day, then this book is for you. You can purchase it at quotesbychristy.com, which is my website, or the link will be in the show notes. Do you have a biggest lesson that you've learned from one of the most difficult times of your life thus far? Well, I feel like I've said a lot of them, to be honest. I mean, there's so many. I think less social media, less scrolling, um, being really grateful, um, and also just the feeling. Like, that's really something that's really guided me. Like, I used to, like, want validation so much. So I would ignore the feeling of, like, not liking something or 
not feeling good enough or something not clicking. And I would like in touch, like I would try to like trump it by like, so for TikTok, it's like, no, like I'm going to get this many followers. I'm going to do it. Like I'm going to, you know, it's like, even though I didn't want to, I didn't like it. It wasn't coming naturally to me. Same thing with like a friend. Like if a friend isn't giving me the energy that like I want or maybe it's making me feel good, I would try so badly to get their validation and attention. And what I realized was just like, why are you doing that? Like people, Taylor Swift said this in her interview for Time magazine. It was like, the trash takes itself out. So like, let things that aren't working, that aren't fitting into the whole, like, let them leave. Like, there's a reason yeah. why that's happening. It's not because you're not good enough. It's because maybe they're just not meant for you. I really like that. Do you have a piece of advice that you would give to other people who maybe feel like they're too much sometimes or who maybe have been called too much from other people yeah i'd be like anyone who's criticized me like that or it's like they're too calm she's too confident or or like she's too much it's just like that's a them thing i never said i've never said that about anyone in my life and by the way no one's ever said that about a man no one's so said valid that ever i've never heard someone go that man is too much it's so, so it's valid. like like maybe Kanye West, but I think he's mentally ill. So not that he gets the pass, but he maybe gets a little pass there. But it's like, like, when is a man called too much? You know what I mean? Like, it's like even Donald Trump, he's not called too much. Like, he's fucking celebrated for being too much. Like, I just think it's like a woman is meant to. This all fi- falls under the line of the patriarchy that is like a woman is meant to be small, invisible. She's not meant to take up too much space. Like, she's just supposed to, like, be accommodating. Yeah, And I think, like, the thing about my brand that rubs people the wrong way is that, like, I'm like, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to be accommodating. Like, because if I'm not, if the, I'm, you're feeling uncomfortable by my presence here, that that's a, that's a you thing. It has nothing to do with me. Because it's like, I don't go on the internet. I don't, like, shit on people. I don't, like, I'm not a negative. I don't, I don't put out negative energy. And so it's like, I really, like, it, that's what's so funny to me is people like love to show on me obviously it makes sense why because it's like i hold up a mirror to who they are because i'm like i stand proudly being like, i'm the queen of confidence i don't say i'm confident all the time like i'm like a wave like it's like it comes to ways i pull in and i come out like that's it's just that's being a human being but yeah. i i try to relentlessly treat myself like my best friend and sometimes i am very critical in, in a way that i wouldn't be to my best friend but at least like i'm able to be like this is who i want to be this is who i'm going to become and it's just so funny to me how people are like, they love, they love to hate me for it. But I'm like, but that's about you. Because like, if I'm saying that about myself, then you're upset that you're not confident. And so like, why are you like, I'm not the issue here. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like, I really do feel like I'm going to make mistakes in life. I will take accountability. I had many times before and I will always. I think that that's how you, it's like, we're all going to fuck up. It's about how we deal with that fuck up. But it's like, I generally, I come from a very like well-intended place. And so when people like don't get that or they try to pay me to be someone else, I'm like, you just don't know me at all. And that's not my problem. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's hard. I mean, like getting shit on the internet. I mean, like it's like it's unreal. Like I just like noticed like TikTok has become very like aggressive. And but I think that there's a lot more anger because theoretically now like anyone could blow up, right? Like anyone could be like Alex Earl. So I think like there's a lot of anger towards the people that are getting invited on trips or getting gifting or like, you know, getting money and like getting these brand deals because it's like, well, why not me? And so there's a lot of anger towards them. Instead, the energy actually needs to be focused on you and the work that you're doing. It's like the only thing you can control. How do you deal with that anger though? Like how have you dealt with some of that criticism? So I just posted a video about turning 30 and turning 30 in like 21 21- 20 i can't do math like happy almost birthday yeah so excited and i'm a tree 30 and i'm i'm super excited about it i think it's very chic and like i'm definitely ready for that era of my life and i posted a video and it was like so many of the comments were like it went viral so so many comments were like every single one that was made was by the accounts with like the no username and like the no photo love those saying that i was like that I look like I'm 50, that I, I'm old, that I like look horrible. Like, oh, like I, I just don't. Like I have incredible genetics for my mom like I, and my grandma. Like I have great skin. Like there's just no way, but sure. <laughs> but I, before I'd probably like leave it or like not yeah. want to like accommodate the comment, you not want to like, and I was just like, no. And every single one of those comments, that account was blocked. Because I was like, there's a difference of like you saying, hey, I don't like this. Like, let's talk about it. Let's talk it through. Like this bothered me. I'm happy to have that dialogue. But if you're just going to like constantly mean about me, like, yeah. why would I ever give you the privilege to ever watch my content again? 
Like you're just being you cruel. Yeah. No, like, I was just like, there's nothing like there's no like there's nothing. This You're just saying this to be mean and to shit on me. And I'm like, goodbye. And they're probably not even thinking about it. I think it's like it's, it's like comment X, but like they don't even there's no accountability. There's no feeling. It's crazy. No. And I don't I feel like I'm in a position where like I'm OK and like I can handle. But I think so much about like younger kids, younger women, like little girls my future children like it scares the fuck out of me like I don't know yeah. how you do that it's really scary you know it's like you yeah. have to have thick fucking skin and just realize that like I'd never in my life ever left a mean comment on someone's video or photo like, yeah ever 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 so it's like sorry I never left a mean comment or anything on anyone's video so it's just like why like anyone who ha- is, does that like why there's nothing petty or wrong with just blocking people. Like, I feel like just because people are willing to throw that out doesn't mean that you have to open yourself up to accept it all the time. Right. Like, those things do not have to happen together. And I just, I feel like for some reason we also, I feel like the comment goes around a lot. Like, well, you're an influencer. You should be okay with people coming at you. Like, that's just part of your job. And it's like, yeah, but you also, like, have the right to create boundaries. Like, That whole thing is really interesting to me because I'm just like, so because I post a video, suddenly I'm allowed to put up with people being mean to me. I think there's a difference here. I think there's something like if you post something and people respond to it and have a dialogue, yeah, like you're opening up a dialogue. You're opening up a conversation, yeah. But just to agree to like be mean is just like, no, like I'm not, I I didn't sign up for this profession to just be shit on. Like that's, that's that's crazy. Like that makes no sense. And I think that that's, again, like this anger toward people that have a following. Well, like, you deserve this. Like, this is what you get. It's like, no, like, I'm an entrepreneur. And like, I literally make content to uplift people. Like, I'm not a mean person. I've seen people do like, like, they do like celebrity recaps of like the red carpet and they shit on people's outfits. Okay, maybe like, I I don't do that, you know? Granted, whatever. It's just like, you have to, you have to let it, you have to let it go. You have to let it go. It's, it's really... It's just I've noticed it so much more, like how aggressive people are, and I'm just like, are, are people okay? Like, you. I don't think they are. Also, I I'm mad. Like, 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 also, I, they really don't realize they're doing it, and it's just like, they, I, I just don't think they do. Like, it's so funny when people are like, I didn't think you would actually see this, and I'm like, what? But like, I really don't yeah. think that they're registering that they're actually like commenting on a human being video. No, because I think everything like I think influencers are almost like celebrity. I mean, they are. They're kind of like celebrities where like if you saw a celebrity out getting coffee, you'd be like shocked. Like you just don't consider them like real humans. It just feels like they're kind of these like ambiguous beings. And so I think I don't that's what way at all. Like I don't I, at all. Like they are. I'm just I, I yeah, I'm just saying like to the general public. Yeah. I feel like that's what they think. And so that's why they're so okay making comments and honestly, like literally personally messaging these people because they don't really see a human being on the other side of it. That's right. the only way I could I could rationalize that kind of behavior. Right. To close us off, do you have a favorite quote or a favorite mantra? Maybe it's one that you've been repeating to yourself lately or one that you've just loved your whole life. Um, if you were ready... You wouldn't have the opportunity. It's my favorite. I love because that. I just think it's like, it makes you feel also like when you are ready for something, like that's when the opportunity will come. And so it's like, I would say that a lot to myself, like when I was single and I really wanted to be in a relationship, like I was like, when I'm really ready to be in one, like it's going to happen. And it's about trusting the timing of your life. And so it's like, or on the flip side, it's like, I, you know, like if I about to do something like, write a screenplay like I've obviously had imposter syndrome about it and then I was just like if I wasn't ready to write this like I wouldn't have the idea I wouldn't have like been sitting every day and doing it like there's a reason why like I'm I'm doing it it's because I'm actually ready to do it so it's like that's just like completely all about like a shift right the shift in the way that you see something I'm I'm big on perspective so that's been really helpful I love it and you couldn't have you couldn't have put in the name any more perfectly right at the end there um serena thank you so much for joining us i feel like there's so much we could all learn from this entire conversation and i'm I knew so it was gonna glad be i had so much fun it was great thank you so much for having me of course um before we sign off can you let us know how everyone can support you and your work what your new projects are give us handles and websites 
Yeah, no, Serena Kerrigan on everything and let's fucking do.com is my card game. I highly suggest you that. It's really fun. And and yeah, that's it. I love it. And we will be all waiting out for when that screenplay becomes a reality. So it will happen very soon. So excited. Thank you so much. And to everyone listening and watching, thanks for tuning into The Shift. And we will see you next time. Mm-hmm.